Hey guys, and welcome to this week's edition of the Coffin Hero Show as I record on the 11th of July. Obviously this week, new comic book day will be postponed by one day. Uh, given this wonderful country of ours, the uh, Smithfield is closed on the 12th of July, so we'll be reopening on the 13th. It'll be business as usual, uh, 13th, 14th, 15th, leading into the weekend. All pull lists are already done, new releases are on the rack, so slightly delayed new comic book day, but tons of great stuff this week, which we'll certainly get to in a moment. Uh, just a couple of things to go through. Uh, first of all, uh, the response to us putting out a little post just about pull lists and so forth has been really, really good. Um, really appreciate that, guys. You know, if, if you know you had some stuff built up or maybe some stuff you'd even forgotten about, I know life gets busy. But I uh, know people have been really good about getting in touch. There's just one or two there um, that haven't uh, with slightly smaller pull lists. But again, we've got until the end of the month. So hopefully, you know, people will reach out or maybe they just haven't seen the social media post or whatever. But it is really appreciated for everyone who, who has reached out. Um, I am running a promotion. There's a new title coming out soon called The Enfield Gang Massacre. It's a new Western comic through Image Comics. It is written by Chris Condon and art is by Jacob Phillips. You may recognize those names. One of the titles we always champion in store is That Texas Blood. Genuinely one of the best comics around. Uh, crime Noir. And Enfield Gang Massacre, it's set in the same universe but at an earlier point in time during the Old West. Looks absolutely fantastic. I may have got a sneaky look at issue one. But for anyone who's interested in it, we're running the competition. Uh, we got one of the promo posters sent to the store. We're gonna get that professionally framed. And if you sign up for the series starting at issue one, your name will be entered into a draw and you'll win that prize. Uh, definitely worth getting. It's a really, really cool cover in general, really cool poster. And as I say, we're getting Sam to professionally frame it, so it won't just be a random off the, off the shelves frame. It'll be professionally done. So we're running that, so do get in touch with us. Uh, it's not out for another month or so, so plenty of time to let us know if you'd like that added. And then, as I say, to get your name in the hat for that. So tons to get through this week. Uh, I've been a busy bee. I've been putting together tons of new packs, for example, which are all going out into the store. Uh, we've got our usual selection of graphics, single issues, and some statues in this week as well. So kick things off the single issues. We'll have DC, first of all, uh, Wildcats new issue this week, issue nine. Matthew Rosenberg continuing to write the holy heck out of Wildcats, brilliant DC title. We have a brand new number one this week, which is World's Finest Teen Titans. So Mark Wade is continuing his slow takeover of the DC universe. Uh, Manuela Lupacino is on board as artist. And look at that glorious Chris Samley cover, one of my favorite artists working in DC. Yes, please. Uh, next up, we have a rape of Night Terrors. Now, I have to say <laughs> Night Terrors is the bane of my existence right now because Night Terrors is a title, it's a DC event. Uh, we pushed it for two months, we put it on the board. We put it on the board for two months, actually. We talked about it on the podcast, we talked about it on the YouTube. There was a free comic book day issue, we ordered in 200 copies of that, so you guys could get a sneak preview of it. But leading up to it, there was no hype around it whatsoever. We had, I think, three or four people sign up for it. So I, I wasn't gonna order big on it, because you know, you look at Future State, for example, we've been left with loads of issues of that. Um, we, we just can't put the store in jeopardy by ordering 50 copies of something that has three people with it on a pull list. It's just not going to happen. So we always got to be sensible with ordering. So I only ordered a few extras. Now the first, uh, the alpha issue came out last week, which is called First Blood. And uh, I came back after a couple of days off, Chris running the store, to three pages worth of notes of people now signing up to Night Terrors. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it's a tricky thing because because the pre-orders weren't big on it and I'm guessing it's not just us they're not big with, they're not big with a lot of people. They're not doing big print runs. So there's ones already that are out of print, they're out of stock. Uh, First Blood is out of stock. Certain variants are out of stock um, and certain titles are out of stock. So it just it really hammers home the importance of the pre-ordering system. I know it can be tricky to commit to something so far out. Uh, but again, that's what the free comic book day issue was for. That was a, a really great insight into what Night Terrors was going to be. And having read First Blood on some of the issues, it's class. It's actually really, really good. So yeah, just always keep an eye on the boards, guys, if you can. It really does help us with pre-orders in terms of knowing what to order, in terms of making sure. We, we never want to disappoint you. We want you to get your first prints, your cover A's on release day. But an event like that, as I say, for it to jump from three people, we now have 29 people on it. I mean, it didn't jump from three to seven or something. It literally multiplied by 10. So uh, we really need uh, as much notice as a say on that as possible. I have been able to satisfy all of the orders, but one or two of them might take an extra couple of days here and there because I've had the source issues from, I think, six different places. 
So a lot of effort goes into it. But anyway, uh, for this week's titles, Night Terrors number one kicks off. It's a four issue mini series. That's issue one after the alpha issue last week of First Blood. We managed to get back in stock a uh, Night Terrors Batman. It's now out of stock, so any issues we have in store is the last we'll have of that. Uh, for this week's stuff, we have Night Terrors of the Flash. Uh, with Alex Pacnadel writing that one. We have Night Terrors Green Lantern with Jeremy Adams on this. We have Night Terrors Robin with uh, Howard Porter and Miguel Mendoza on that. We have Mark Wade and Roger Cruz on Night Terrors Shazam. And also this week is Night Terrors Zatanna number one, Dennis Culver writing that one. So all the, the tie-in series are all gonna be two issues. Um, all the number ones are the month of July, all the number twos are the month of August, and then the main series is four issues, so as I say, out this week. And then the last DC one this week is Spirit World, uh, which is written by Alyssa Wong, uh, and it is an amazing title, I love this title, I've already read this issue as well, John Constantine featuring in it. All the We Are Legend stuff has been great, and this is absolutely no exception. Uh, so we move away from there and on to Marvel. So quite a lot out from Marvel this week. So kicking things off, we have Immortal X-Men. We're on issue 13 of this, Kieran Gillen, to continue with that. We have a brand new one shot, which is Fallen Friend, The Death of Miss Marvel. Spoiler. Uh, so G. Willow Wilson involved with this, Mark Wade, Saladin Ahmed, Murder's Row of Talent, obviously a, a tribute issue to Kamala Khan. We have New Amazing Spider-Man this week, issue 29. So Zeb Wells, Ed McGuinness on art for this one. We have the second issue of Loki, uh, Dan Waters writing this. We still have an issue one up there I see as well. So if you're only coming on to this, we do have the first two issues in stock. Uh, facsimile time this week as well, Incredible Hulk 181. Uh, the second appearance of Wolverine, don't add me. Uh, I still maintain issue 180 as is the first appearance. But uh, this is a more famous issue certainly, the battle between Hulk and Wolverine. We have Miles Morales Spider-Man number eight. So Cody Ziglar continuing on with the Miles Morales Spider-Man title. We have an enormous 25th issue for Moon Knight. Uh, so a super sized issue, square bound, uh, Jed McKay, Alessandro Capuccio continuing on art. Moon Knight continues to be for me one of Marvel's best titles. We have a new issue of Scarlet Witch this week. So Steve Orlando continuing on with the Wanda Maximoff title. A little couple of bits of Star Wars with Star Wars Bounty Hunters, Ethan Sachs. And Jesus Medina continuing on that. We have Star Wars Darth Vader, which is up as far as issue 36. Uh, Greg Pak continuing to fill out that corner of the Star Wars universe. And then we finish off with What If Dark Loki, which is a, a one-shot written by Walt Simonson. Uh, Scott Eaton involved in this one as well, and Corey Smith. Uh, but new one-shot as part of that What If Dark line. So moving on then to uh, the indie side of things. So we kick things off with Antarctica. Brand new number one from Image Comics through the Top Cow imprint on that. So I have a copy of that on myself to the side, looking forward to it. Uh, Your Eyes Do Not Deceive You, a new issue of Fright Night is out. Uh, this is issue three. I think this series started two years ago nearly. And we're only at issue three. Really slow coming out to say the least. <clears throat> a brand new one out which I'm looking forward to is Sirens of the City. It's a brand new Boom Studios title, Urban Magic title, which looks really, really good. Really class art to it. I've had a flick through it. It's mostly sort of black and white art with splashes of color. Really, really cool. Uh, we move on from there to The Rocketeer, Den of Thieves. This is a brand new number one, brand new Rocketeer series. Stephen Mooney involved with this again after his last great Rocketeer series. We have Fish Flies, brand new Jeff Lamar. Uh, it's a, again a thicker book. It is written and drawn by Jeff Lamar. So the pre-orders now have been pretty strong. They really will do anything in comics. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meet Stranger Things. Go figure. But comics is the only way you can sort of do these things. I like how they're insinuating that the turtles are part of the Upside Down, which is kind of fun. Um, but yeah, that's the, the new release single issues this week going on the racks. Uh, as well as that, we have some variants. So spoilers, if you haven't read Void Rivals, it's been out a month now, so the spoilers are out there. Uh, Void Rivals is an introduction to Transformers, which is now moving across the Image Comics. Uh, Robert Kirkman has finally got his grubby little hands on Transformers and G.I. Joe. They're gonna be coming across the image. Transformers is actually gonna be done by Daniel Warren Johnson, so that is hella exciting news. Uh, but they have come back with some second printing covers for Void Rivals, showcasing Transformers. Uh, there's actually two second printing covers, that being one, and the other one being a Sesame Street homage. So we have those both in. So again, that's Void Rivals number one. We do still have one or two of the first prints in there, but if you like the Transformers stuff, those second print covers are there as an option. Couple of Moon Knight variants this week as well. So first of all, we have the one to 25. 
by Maria Wolf for Midnight 25. And we also have a lovely Frank Miller variant cover. Uh, yeah, I, I'm really liking all these Frank Miller variant covers for uh, Marvel titles coming out at the moment. And then we finish off variants wise with Amazing Spider-Man 23, uh, sorry, 29. And uh, this is a David Nakayama variant cover for that. This is the Hellfire Gala variant cover for us there. So that is single issues wise. So why don't I reach across and I'll take you through some of the packs then. As I say, I've got tons of new stuff going out over the next couple of weeks. Just takes a while to put these together. So first up we have I Hate This Place. This was a 10 issue mini series. Uh, very ha uh, very heavy on the horror and action side of things. And also some timey wimey stuff as well. 10 issues, Kyle Starks, Artem Toplin on art. Really, really good series. Next up we have All Again Stole, which was a five issue mini series. Alex Pacmandel writing. Casper Weingard on art, uh, printed through Image Comics. A couple of deceased packs coming up next, some some special deceased packs. Really. These are both War of the Undead Gods packs, but what they are is one of them is a complete set of the acetate covers, which cover each member of the Justice League. But we also have the complete issue, Missy, the complete eight issues for deceased War of the Undead Gods, which are all homage variant covers. And that includes the first three, which were done by Dan Moore, which are a connecting set as well. Next up, we have Batman Joker Deadly Duo. This is the Batman variant pack. So all of the variants focused on Batman. There was a set focused on Joker as well. But you've got artists in here from the likes of Greg Capullo, from the likes of uh, Simon Bisley. Some really, really cool ones here. And a brilliant story as well from Mark Silvestri. We have Junkyard Duo. <clears throat> all six issues, all together. Jeff Johns, Gary Frank. Continuing to expand their Geiger universe. Fantastic title. Level. Slightly older one here going through Rebirth. We have Justice League versus Suicide Squad. So this is, I think, about 11 or 12 issues in total. Because you've got the six issue mini series of Justice League versus Suicide Squad. But also included in this is the prelude issues and the follow up issues, which were done through Suicide Squad and Justice League. All in reading order, all in there. Next up, we have The Escapists, which was a really cool six issue Brand K Vaughn mini series. Pretty much a love letter to comics. Uh, kind of thing. Really, really good stuff. We have a recent Matt Kint series called Spy Superb, which was a three issue mini series about creating the perfect spy, i.e. someone who doesn't know they're a spy. Uh, Samurai Doggy is a new one, which is uh, six issues, Aftershock Comics, uh, very much a post-apocalyptic version, uh, vision of the future and uh, a samurai doggy who traverses the terrain. Next up is Kill Cello, which was a four issue mini series, which was to do around the music event called Coachella. But it's a title all about sort of the horror and the lengths that fans will go to for famous people. Uh, all types of ritual killings and all sorts in there. Uh, some more horror for you, which is Harrower, four issue mini series to do with uh, coming of age in a small town, shall we say, and uh, the urban legend, urban myth of the Harrower. We have DCPD, The Blue Wall, which is a six issue mini series. This is almost a spiritual successor to Gotham Central. Fantastic book, six issues, John Ridley and uh, Stefano Raffaele and Art. Keith and I chatted about this in the podcast. I think at least three issues of that were picks of the week. Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise, which is a four issue mini series coming from the mind of Trad Moore. Very trippy, very psychedelic, uh, gorgeous artwork in every single page, four issues in total. <clears throat> We also have Gotham City Year One, six issue mini story about the origins of Gotham, uh, going back 80 years. Uh, Tom Keane on writing duties, Phil Hester on art, so that is a great time as well. We have Clear, which was a three issue mini series, Scott Snyder, Francis Manipal, basically all about seeing the world through whatever way you want to see it. Uh, science fiction story, murder investigation, uh, very much a neo noir, really, really good stuff, very cyberpunky. Uh, next up we have 007, this is the first mini series that Phil Con Kennedy Johnson wrote, uh, which has been brilliant. Um, I'm not a huge James Bond comic guy, love the movies, uh, but this really, really brought me in. And uh, great storytelling, and it ends on a cliffhanger that then leads into the current series, which is called For King and Country. Then we finish off with two more, we have Briar, which is a four issue mini series from Christopher Cantwell and Jermaine Garcia. And it's all to do with what if Sleeping Beauty never got her happily ever after and had to fend for herself. Not the fairy tale you remember, I can tell you. And then the last one, I'll just pick up the front issue for it because it's a 20 issue maxi series. We have the complete run of Die <clears throat> in single issues. Die in single issues is really worth it because there's tons of 
um, reports at the back, there's tons of letters pages, there's essays, there's role playing um, games, all kinds of stuff, but a complete first issue set of die as well. That one will be up at the counter because being 20 issues, it'll be more in a display case as opposed to uh, in the racks. So yeah, as you can see, I've been very busy putting packs together, writing my little blurbs for them, and uh, they'll all be going out to the racks this week. So we move away from there and we go on to the graphic novel side of things. Not the biggest week, but some good quality stuff here. First of all, we have Marvel vs. Spider-Woman. This is collecting together some classic Spider-Woman issues. Uh, number one from 1978 and number 20. Avengers Assemble from the 2012 series, 18 and 19, and material from A plus X as well. We have the next Mighty Marvel Masterworks in the Amazing Spider-Man collection. This covers Amazing Spider-Man 29 to 38. Uh, as you can see, classic cover on the front. And uh, there's some really, really good issues within this. Um, these are great for, for all ages. I got this in, which was a little pack. Um, so new X-Men, Grant Morrison and predominantly Frank Quitely on art, uh, was a, a big launch for the X-Men. It was all about simplifying things, taking it back to the school for gifted kids. And uh, it's pretty much seen as one of the best X-Men runs going. So there's eight of these uh, digest volumes and it, they carry an RRP if they were all separately of 112 pounds because uh, they're 14 each. But what we've done is we've packaged it all together as one set and we've got it there at 85. So that's for the whole run. Um, I just worry about putting this out. They're out of print. So I just worry about putting these out individually on the shelves. Someone comes in and buys number five and then someone else is interested in all of them, but I can't find number five anywhere. So out as a pack, we'll see how things go. Next up, we have the Invincible Ultima Collection Volume 9. So continuing to load up the image racks with those. We have a omnibus this week, which I'm very excited about myself, which is the Superior Spider-Man omnibus, uh, predominantly Dan Slott and uh, Rand Stegman. You also have other creators work uh, involved here as well. But this has Superior, this has Amazing Spider-Man 698 to 700, uh, Superior Spider-Man 131 and the two Superior Spider-Man annuals as well. So I'm really looking forward to that when uh, Otto basically became Spider-Man. We have a great epic collection this week, which is a touch of Typhoid, i.e. Typhoid Mary coming into Daredevil. Uh, this is the and the Sandy John Romita Jr. run. One of the best Daredevil artists, one of the best Daredevil storytellers. This covers issues 253 to 270 and also includes Punisher number 10. New AWA Studios title this week, which is Black Tape, which was a really cool horror title, a really cool music title as well. Uh, as ever, self-contained, five issues in total, really good stuff. We have Doctor Strange by Donny Cates out in the complete collection. Uh, this covers his run, which was Doctor Strange 3 at 1 to 390, and also a four issue mini series called Doctor Strange Damnation. So, all in one place again. We have the first volume of the current uh, Fantastic Four run, Whatever Happened to the Fantastic Four. This is where Ram North has taken over, and uh, Iban Quello on art. I've been really enjoying Fantastic Four. We have Grim, uh, volume 2, Devils and Dust. I'm guessing Stephanie Phillips must be a Bruce Springsteen fan with that title. Uh, but this covers issues 6 to 10, so chapter 2 of Grimm. We have Nemesis Reloaded. Uh, Mark Millar, Jorge Jimenez continuing on with their What If Batman Was Actually Evil uh, indie title. Great, great stuff. And we finish off with a hardcover for Quick Stops, which is uh, anecdotes and tales from the annals of the Askewiverse, uh, which is, of course, the Kevin Smith created universe in movies. So that is everything there. I've just three things to finish off with, and that's three statues coming into the store. The first one being a one to seven scale premiere collection for Star Wars of Ashoka Tano, and uh, it is pretty gloriously detailed. Uh, I do not expect this to uh, last long, limited to 3,000 pieces. We have a, gra a brand new uh, Bishuju statue, which is for DC Comics Stargirl, uh, which is a pretty cool design to say the least. Uh, obviously done in that uh, Bishuju style, uh, so that is new this week. And then we finish off with a little bit of Spidey from Spider-Man No Way Home. This is uh, Integrated Suit, uh, Diorama Stage 101, Spider-Man No Way Home. You have the stage in the background of that as well, which is pretty cool. So that is going to do it for me for this week for everything coming into the store. As I say, just that reminder, we are closed on the Wednesday, but we'll reopen as normal on the Thursday for this week's releases. <clears throat> as ever anything catches dry just drop us a message we'll get you covered and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys back in the store when I'm in again on Saturday so hope you're staying safe out there hope you enjoyed this hope it proved useful as ever get those pre-orders in for Enfield Gang Massacre because it was class 
and uh, I'll see you soon. Take it easy.